activity. This is the work part, the labor part, taking action. And the activity is the miracle working piece. The miracle being something we don't quite understand how it works. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. It means we just don't quite understand how it works. Miracles work. God says. Now, I'm an amateur on God, but here's my best analysis. God says, if you'll plant the seed, I'll make the tree. Now, that's a good arrangement. Number one, gives God the tough end of the deal. What if you had to make the tree? That'd keep you up late night trying to figure out, how do you make a tree? Say, no, I'm telling you, the mystery and the miracle of this stuff has already been set up. God says, I got the miracle going, I got the seasons going, I got some sunshine and some rain, and I'm God. But the way I've arranged it, I just need somebody to plan the seed, not chant. California, they're trying to chant to get this stuff done. Forget this California stuff. You don't have to rub a crystal and sleep under a pyramid. This stuff's too easy. Getting rich is too easy. Changing your life is too easy. Get all that. Massive bombard, affirmation, get all that, in my opinion. Ocean waves and seagulls, on. This stuff's too simple. Just simple, easy stuff. But if you neglect it, that's how it piles up year after year. If you're willing to straighten it out. Here's one of the keys. It's called activity. It's called discipline. Turning wisdom from your philosophy and inspiration, strengthening of attitude, and faith, courage, commitment, and all this stuff that comes from attitude. If you're willing to take these two quality, philosophy and attitude, and invest it into activity, you can have a miracle. Anything short of that, no miracle. Wisdom doesn't perform a miracle. Attitude doesn't perform a miracle. The only thing that performs a miracle of increase called equity is called putting wisdom and attitude into discipline, labor. This labor now can perform a miracle. And here's the two parts to the labor. One, do what you can. Number two, do the best you can. Can't give you better advice than that. Number one, do what you can. You just gotta go home and make a list after today. And here's the question to ask as you make this personal list. What am I not doing that would be easy to do? that could greatly change my health, my wealth. What am I not doing I'm neglecting that would be easy to do? Just go home and answer that question personally. You don't have to put the answers on a public bulletin board. This is just all personal stuff. From the walk around the block to the apple, to what to do with your money, which we're gonna to cover today. What does a child do with a doll? We're gonna cover that today. Errors in judgment, disaster. A few simple disciplines, wealth, beyond imagination. And if you'll pick up the activity part, the miracle working part, plant the seed part, take care of your part, the soil will take care of its part, the seed will take care of its part, the seasons will take care of their part, the miracle will take care of its part, if you'll take care of your put part, call putting it into activity. Action. Works miracles. 2,000 years ago, on April 13th, one of Jesus' disciples, now again, I'm an amateur on the Bible, best as I can remember, one of Jesus' disciples said to Jesus, it's time to pay our taxes and we don't have any money. That's how come I know it was about April 13th. To this statement by his disciple, Jesus said, just as I can read the record, Jesus said, no problem. Now, why could he say no problem? Well, word has it, word has it, he was a miracle worker. Word has it, if you're a good student of history, word has it, he was a miracle worker. If you handed a problem to a miracle worker, what would he be inclined to say? No problem. You got to hang out with folks like that. I belong to a small group like that. We do business around the world. You hand these guys a problem, they say no problem. What? How many books would they read to solve it? As many as it takes. How early would they get up? Early as it takes. How much information would they get? As much as they need it. So it's what? No problem. You gotta hang out with folks. Jesus said, this will be no problem, the tax thing. He said to his disciple, it's simple. Go fishing. Wow. Now that was easy for this particular disciple. His name was Peter. And Peter was a fisherman. How clever. How clever. But here's the real problem. If you should fish, and you could fish, and you don't fish, you got no miracle. You could change, you should change, you won't change. That's called accumulated disaster. In six years, you'll be explaining instead of celebrating. Having some ragged list like I had, reasons for not doing well pennies in my pocket. Could, should, don't, disaster. And if you'll just start the process of change, could, should, and will, you can start this whole process. And if you will, then put it into action. The miracle belongs to you. Jesus said to his disciple, it'll be simple. Go fishing, and the first fish you catch, look in his mouth. Peter said, okay. He was used to strange things happening in this relationship. Peter goes fishing, catches the first fish, looks in his mouth. Guess what's in the fish's mouth? Coin. Peter says, wow, coins. Starts counting the value of these coins, and when he adds it up, guess how much it added up to? Exactly enough money to pay his taxes and Jesus' taxes, which gives you Jesus' position on taxes. Now, we call that what? A miracle, only because we don't quite understand how it works. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. It simply means we don't quite understand how it works. 
here's how you get a miracle going through your life. Number one, do what you can. Get a list of the stuff you could do and you haven't done, postpone, and start cleaning that up. You can't start at a better place for personal change. It'll affect your bank account, affect your future, affect your income, affect everything. You can't start a better life change process than cleaning up what you should be doing. The man says, well, my mother lives down in Florida. Should have written her six months ago. I just can't seem to get that letter written. I'm asking you to get that letter written, clean that up. Don't walk like other people walk. Don't postpone like other people postpone. You say, well, is it as simple as writing a letter? And the answer is yes. Where else would you start for life change purpose? You don't need a pink package to fall out of the sky. You don't need massive bombard pre-conscious subconscious. Practice channeling, find a 2,000 year gold guru. I mean, you don't need any of that stuff. Pass on all that. Kids are afraid of that stuff. Too much of it, you'll be out on a limb with Shirley. I mean, don't pass on all that stuff. This stuff's too easy, this stuff's too simple. It's called take action, number one, on neglect, on errors, and discipline. Number two, start setting up some discipline. And if you'll do that, you'll perform a miracle. Now here's the second part of the miracle. Number one is do what you can. Here's number two, do the best you can. If that's not your philosophy, I would ask you to amend it. Let me give you the best of ancient script. Here's what it says. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might, do it with all your strength, and do it with all your power. What a good philosophy. That kind of philosophy revolutionize your life if you haven't picked it up late. Guy slips in late, company doesn't seem to mind, slips out early, first one in the parking lot heading for happy hour. Stretches his break, comes early for lunch, late back from lunch, company doesn't seem to notice. Guy says, best as I can calculate, I'm putting in about a half a day's work and I'm collecting a full day's pay. And the guy says, I got it made. Little does he know the seeds of his own disaster are already being sown by the weakness of his own personal philosophy. It's not the economy that's going to determine your next six years. It's your philosophy about labor and about activity and about miracle and soil and seed and sunshine and rain and the economy and the banks and the money and the companies and the schools and what's going on. It's your philosophy, and your attitude and then your ability to take action. All of that we call the process of life change, miracle working. Let's get to work. You are beautiful. I'm so excited to be here. I'm very honored to be invited here by a man that I consider an icon when it comes to personal empowerment, a man who is truly a renaissance man who's ahead of his time and having the vision and the dream to create a Woodstock of the mind. He's making history. T. Hob Eckert, let's give him a round of applause. Let's give it to him. Thank you so very much. Yes. And I consider him a personal coach, an example of what we all can be when we make up our minds of living from our greatness as opposed to our fears. How many of you have some major goals you'd like to achieve? Raise your hands, please. Very good. I like to ask that question. There's no saying that if you aim at nothing in life, you hit nothing dead on the head. I've been looking at my life and reflecting on my life because 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I stand before you because of God's grace and mercy and faith in knowing that as we work together, as we believe in the possibilities of the fact that healing takes place first within, then without, the possibility is unlimited of what we can do. I'm going to do a national tour called You Are More Powerful Than Cancer. One of the things I think doctors should never tell anyone they're terminally ill. I think what they should say is that my knowledge and ability to help you has terminated. My PSA 10 years ago was 110 as I stand before you. It's, it's 270, one to four men, you know that's normal. And PSA stands for prostate specific antigen, but to me, PSA stands for positively staying alive. I was reflecting on my life during the time when I received 238 radiation seed implants. And as I looked at my life, I asked myself a question. And I want to ask you a question. How many of you know if you had your life to live over again, you could have done more than what you've done thus far? Raise your hands, please. Now, that proves the point of what we do, what we accomplish, what we produce in life is only a tip of the iceberg of what's 
possible for us. I want you to think about some major goal that gives your life a sense of meaning right now. And as you're thinking about that, I want you to shake someone's hand on your right and your left and around you. Look them in the eyes and say with conviction, you have something special. Do that quickly now, please. Tell them you have something special. Yes. So now, I want you to join me right now. I want you to think about some major goal that you'd like to achieve. Something that gives your life a sense of meaning. Something that will give your life a sense of purpose and direction. You know, I'm always looking for new ways to explain the power of the five second rule and the power of five second decisions. And I read something that Tim Ferriss said that really resonated with me. And he had this one line buried in a podcast somewhere that just jumped out and it's, it's, it's stuck. And what he said is he said something about how there's a gap between the world and the things that trigger you and your response. You can increase your productivity and move closer towards your goals just by managing what you are doing and when you are doing it. So why then do people choose to kill time? This is quite literally letting time pass you by instead of taking advantage of it. Killing time is a vicious cycle. What starts as a short break, browsing online can turn into hours wasted. It feeds your lack of action and interrupts your workflow. When you find yourself in one of these situations, scrolling the internet aimlessly, stop for a second and think about what you aren't accomplishing. The more you procrastinate, the longer it will take for your task to really get done. Sometimes a task seems so daunting, you don't want to get started. You come up with a random thing or things to do, wasting your time instead of knocking this one task out. I've been there too. In my book, Eat That Frog, I talk about eating your ugliest frog first. Tackle the hardest thing on your to-do list or the thing that is hanging over your head and get it done first. It takes discipline to accomplish the hardest task first, but it is a habit that will increase your levels of performance and productivity. Sometimes you have to ignore how you feel and just get started. Nobody wants to start a difficult task, but successful people put their heads down and just do it.